Well, hey there, it's Catherine from Catherine Polar Designs. Welcome to episode number two of the holiday card making series. We're going to do mass producing and watercolored backgrounds inspired by, well, not inspired. I'm just going to recreate this card by Lisa Harold to show you how quick and easy it can be to do. I want to use yellow green for this card, so I'm using my color wheel to pick those colors. So I chose grass skirt, lime ricky, melon ice. Pretty sure that's what Lisa chose, but don't restrict yourself just to these three colors. You Maybe you want to try blues. You know what? I want to try this card in pink. I think that would be gorgeous. So as you can see, I am taking an entire eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. This is watercolor cardstock, and I am ink blending the entire piece at once. This is gonna be a huge time saver rather than doing each individual piece for each individual card one by one. I'm using my large ink blending brush, and this is covering a lot of area, so it's gonna use a lot of ink. So make sure you have your ink refills on hand. Just a little squirt, a little rub back and forth, and you're gonna fill that ink pad back up with ink. And one great thing about the ink blending and re-inking your pads is that when you rub your ink blending brush over the ink pad it's going to spread that ink around on the ink pad for you because you know when you take your nozzle and run it back and forth you may get streaky inking lines across your pad and i always take my block or a soft edge and run it across the ink pad to spread that ink out so when you're doing ink blending techniques, it's kind of a two for one. You get a gorgeous ink blended background and the ink is distributed evenly on your ink pad. Win-win. So I'm doing the melon ice in the center first and then I'm adding the lime ricky on either side of it. And then I'm doing the grass skirt. I'm not worrying too much about making this a perfect even blend. We're gonna end up, uh, when you cut it down and when you add water to it, like we will, uh, you're going to see that that doesn't really matter if you have streaks because it's going to blend out anyway and it's going to look amazing. So I just built up color. I concentrated around the edges to get it darker and then I'm grabbing that spray bottle and I'm just spraying this down. Catherine Polar inks are water-based dye ink so they are reactive with water so you get this gorgeous inky splotchy watercolored blended background. Look at all that texture and dimension. So that was pretty easy, right? So the next step, you're going to get your paper cutter and you're going to trim this panel down or this eight and a half by 11 sheet down into card panels. So I'm die or not die cutting. I am cutting at five and a quarter by four. And as I'm cutting these out, I'm realizing that I did my ink blending I'm not going to say the wrong way because there's no wrong way. It's just different than how Lisa created her card. So she did the light color at the bottom and kind of ombre to darker up at the top. And mine is going to go light to dark from side to side. When you're finished cutting the panels, save the extras. There are different things you can do with these and you will definitely see these later in the video series. Now in this video, I'm, I'm, basically copying her card because I wanted to show you how to make four at once very quickly. But when you are creating, I encourage you to change a few things about the design or maybe take a couple cards and take a few things from each card to incorporate into a new card. And this way, a couple things happens. One is you make it your own. And then two, you kind of find your own stamping style. This is what I did for... Well, I still do this. I did this for sure for the first year and a half that I was a stamper, but I still do it. I get inspiration from other people's creations and then I switch it up and I take ideas from different places. I get, you know, you get familiar with products and techniques and, and then you find your own style. So when you mass produce cards, you're going to want to do each step one by one. So all of the water coloring was done at the same time, all of the cutting you did it to all four panels. Then I die cut the tree trimmings out of the watercolor panel and I did all of them at once. It's just quicker and easier than putting your die cut machine away, bringing it over, doing the little flicking that we're about to do here, and then going back to your die cut machine, cutting the next. So every step, do it to all of your pieces at once. 
So I'm grabbing these Art Philosophy watercolors. I find that these are uh, more opaque than the Gonzai Tombi. I love both of them. This palette here has a lot of different colors in it. The palette, the actual little palettes are, there's a lot of paint in there. It's going to it's going to last you a long time. And then uh, I'm just using the white on this one. So I'm loading up my Nuvo brush and just flicking it on and it adds really great dimension on there and sparkle. Not sure if Lisa used that on her card or not, but it's a great little accent and it's a, an option for you. So next we are moving to the sentiment. So I'm taking my rock and red ink pad and I'm running it across my white cardstock to make rock and red cardstock. And then I'm gonna cut out using, um, I can't remember what these are called, but I will link it below. And I'm cutting all of those out at the same time. And then I'm using my wow embossing pad to stamp the merriest Christmas onto my rock and red layers. I couldn't help myself. I went over to the shop and I looked up that that set of dies. It's called Note Card Layers. It's a great staple product to have in your stash and it's a great little layer for a sentiment. So I used the Merriest Christmas from our Merriest Sentiments stamp set, which is a hand lettered sentiments. It's adorable. And then, wow, embossing powder in white. There are a few spots there that uh, the white embossing powder pieces stuck to where I don't want it. So I just took a paintbrush and brushed those off. And then with my heat tool, I'll heat it. And you can see that sentiment getting embossed. It's magic every single time. So when you do direct to paper, one note, our ink does stay wet for a few seconds and it stays damp for longer than that. It's damp enough to have your embossing powder stick to stick to it a little bit. So when you're doing white on a color, you don't want little white flecks all over the place. So to dry your cardstock, sometimes I'll take my heat tool and just run it over the cardstock to make sure it's dry. I also use a little powder tool to dust it off, wipe it off, make sure that that powder is not going to stick to a bunch of places that I don't want it. You don't want white flecks all over the place. So the next step is just adding these panels to the front of cards. So I have four sheets of eight and a half by 11 cardstock cut in half and folded in half. And then I'm gonna take all of the layers and you guys know I'm wild about foam tape. <laughs> so it, this might be the thing that took me the longest <laughs> while I'm doing this. Back to when we die cut these wreaths. Did you notice that I laid out all the little tree trimmings? Make sure you save those because you're gonna see those later in the series. They're so stinking cute to add to cars in various ways. So adding on all that foam tape, making sure there's enough so that it's gonna lay flat. And then foam squares, I think I started with these and then I changed my mind. Because I had one in, you know, the four in the four corners, and then I needed one in the center because I don't want the middle to dip down. You know what I'm saying? And so then I just decided it was easier to use my foam tape. So again, all these products you can find in our shop. I'm going to link everything below for you. And then I'm going to add on all of my sentiment layers. I'm leaving just a little bit of that tree trimmings visible at the bottom. And then we need some sequins. So I grabbed the Vienna sequins and I'm putting them where all the berries go. Of course, this is what Lisa did, so I thought it was perfect. Just a nice little sparkling touch for the holidays. So just like that, my friend, you can make four really stunning Christmas cards. And when you give it to a friend, you say, that all of this started out with being white cardstock, just a big sheet of white cardstock. Can you believe I made that? <laughs> So before we go, I wanted to share a few more ideas. Here is a similar card. This is just a cut out of a white panel with a watercolored ink blended splattered background behind the piece. So basically opposite of what we just made. And then a show stopping Christmas card with wonderful techniques using the die cut piece as a stencil and then layering on foiled or mirror paper gold 
cutouts on top of the wreath, and then a couple cards with our nice list stamp set using the little tree trimmings as accents. Thank you so much for being here. I can't wait for episode number three. Make sure you're joining us on Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesdays at noon, and you can always see everything on the replay. Have a great day, and we'll see you again soon.